Happy Monday, everybody. I have survived the New Orleans cold this weekend. Of course, I did it with my cocktails. And plus, we're in the middle of Mardi Gras season here in New Orleans. So I think you can figure out how that went for me with the cocktails, too. (laughs) But man, we are in the middle of parade season. I am going to try to bring you some live festivities from the city of New Orleans. Mardi Gras Day is February 13th. So throughout the next couple of weeks, we have the greatest free show on earth. Can't ask for better entertainment than that. So I will definitely try to bring you guys some live shows from some of the great, great parades throughout the city of New Orleans over the next couple of weeks. So be on the lookout for that. Oh, we have a great show for you tonight as well. We're going to dive into the fascinating world of movie and TV music supervision and composing with our incredible guests. So it's a fascinating topic. You're not going to want to miss it. So stick around. Let's take care of quick housekeeping. As always, got to pay the bills. Please, if you haven't checked out our merch page, the QR code will take you straight to it. We have a lot of great swag and it's a great way to support the show and get you some Great items with the Cocktails for Cab logo on it and spread the word about our our fun show. And as always, we'll have our QR code here in the top corner of the show all show long. Take you straight to our tip function. We really, really would appreciate your help supporting the show. It doesn't take much and we can keep bringing you these incredible indie authors, entertainers, and artists. And as always, anybody who supports the show with my tip function, Uh, You'll receive a free copy of my first short story in my series on Barnes & Noble. The pages make the book part one. You can't outrun your childhood. Look at that cute guy on the screen. He... (laughs) Oh, but ladies and gentlemen, we'd really appreciate it if you consider visiting our tip function and supporting the show. So enough of all of that. Please help me welcome for tonight's fascinating discussion and fun. Hope you have a cocktail, could sit back and relax, and join me with our incredible guest, Lowell Hammond. Uh, How you doing, Lowell? Coming to us from London. So glad you could join us, man. I've been wanting to have you on the the show. What you drinking over there for cocktails with Cav, bud? Uh, It's a champagne left over from a New Year's Eve that's gone... A bit flat, but it's still a few bubbles. <laughs> it's, it still has its kick. That's fine. <laughs> That's right. But uh, no, it's great to join you, George, and, and, and uh, New Orleans as well. That's that's really special. So that's a real home of music, isn't it? So oh, uh, we. <laughs> Yeah, we definitely have a great time, that's for sure. And and I tell you, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, uh, if you haven't had a, a chance to interact with, with Lowell on X, uh, just a fun, fun guy and incredible work. <laughs> but it, but you are, and, and but also just a great, great musician, uh, composer and music supervisor for, for movies and television, and Thanks, which is a... Yo. Yeah, it's a fascinating field that I don't think a lot of people know a lot about Lowell, so I really wanted to have you on and uh, oh, get for it. sure. Yeah, Thanks get it. For those lovely words, mate. Oh, I'm glad the retainer I'm paying you is paid off. That's right. <laughs> you can e- email email my PayPal later. We'll we'll be fine. <laughs> that's great, man. Uh, that's great. Um, but yeah, no. Yeah, I, that's okay. yeah, sorry, sorry, but yeah. Oh no, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. But yeah, Lowell, no, please. No. We love to get the audience to get to know the the creators and and tell us a little about you and how you got into the work and yeah, of course. Cool. So it's funny you said about that because uh, you know invariably you know when you're in your own little world you think everybody sort of knows about it all the nooks and crannies and what you're up to, but I do uh, people do seem quite genuinely interested when I go out to various do's as well and people they really want to know about the the process you know so blah blah, blah. so. Um, 
Yeah, I've got, I've got into it. As, in very a lot of these things, it's a bit of luck, isn't it, as well? I was running a lot of clubs in South London, Brixton, and uh, my buddy, producer Alan Niblo, great friend, he, he wanted me to do a cameo in a film we were shooting. It's his second film. We did Human Traffic, a big cult British film. I don't know if you know that one. And he was shooting a, a film called SW9, which is the postcode of Brixton, or part of Brixton, SW22. But uh, he wanted me to do a cameo, and... Uh, so I did a cameo at this club scene in the church. A really great scene. One of my favourite actors was in it as well, Frank Harper, who I love. And uh, so it was all cool. And then the director, Richard Parry, who I've worked with a lot since, turned out to be a big fan of my band in the 90s, a drum club. And he wanted to use a track, so that was all cool. We re-recorded that. But uh, he wanted me to be the uh, music supervisor of the film and I, I really didn't know what he was talking about <laughs> I, thought, I, I just said that's great that's great I was, I was great you know a couple of days filming in this church I got home and I just thought what's he talking about <laughs> what is he it's like, I mean, that's probably pre-internet days even but um, and there didn't seem to be much going on there wasn't a lot of British films being made in the time a guy Richard made his uh, lot of stock and a, a, a woman called Liz Gallagher I think she went off and worked a lot in LA now she seemed to be doing all the films which is great, bless her. Uh, so there was hardly any, not a lot of British films being made. So so I got to the gist of that, what it was. So at, at that stage, I wasn't doing any composing. I just, I, as I said, I placed a track in the film for my old band. Oh. But, um, so, I, yeah, so I, I super, supervised that, that film sort of bit on the fly, you know. And, but we got, it sounds like you, you uh, it sounds like you got into uh, music supervision and film like I kind of got into hosting Cocktails with Cav. Uh, absolutely, I can host a show. I'm, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly, Joel. And, and sometimes I think that that's sometimes the best way, isn't it? Looking back, you know, the things I've got involved in, you know, if you think about things, I've got too long to think about something. <laughs> it's best just to dive in, isn't it? And just like... Uh, sure. So, yeah, there, there was a lot of that. But I think there's a lot. Yeah, I meet so many people who do that. I'm so... <laughs> quite, well, which is quite reassuring. So I suppose you've got a bit of front, but, but obviously a little bit of talent as well. But, but yeah, there's, a, there's obviously there's a lot of luck involved and, and you just grab a... Just, yeah, just go for it, haven't you? I'll well, suppose. sure. And, and I think that... Uh, well, and given your musicianship background, we, we tell us about that. I mean, we, how'd you get involved in music? What do you play? And, and Yeah, what? yeah, of cool. course. So my main instruments are the guitar and the piano. I can play the bass and obviously all sorts of synthesizers and that. Um, percussion as well, because I DJ as well, so I've got rhythm. I can understand beats and all that. Uh, but yeah, um, guitar and piano. Guitar first, actually. Um, it's a little guitar band in the 90s. And then... Um, and then um, got into samplers and keyboards and taught myself sort of piano. So, yeah, they're my main instruments. Um, yeah, I, I played, my first guitar was produced by Mick Ronson, actually, he didn't sell any records, but it was on Chris's, you know, a Bowie's sidekick, who did, did played on all those great Bowie albums in the 70s. Uh, but that, that was a real experience. And then Acid House hit in 88, and I got really involved in that. Uh, and started, like a lot of people, um, making dance records in my sort of bedroom, really, just a sampler and a keyboard. Hmm. Um, it's funny all that, actually, Jules. is a record... I'd, I'd just been playing in Berlin, and I was playing... Because usually I'm playing to sort of older crowds, sort of in their 40s, 45, 50, but I was playing to a really younger crowd, which was great. And these guys run the record shop, run the club, did a record label. They put out stuff in one in the past. Anyway, but they were all like 30, which is amazing. And they, they, there's a record they released in the mine in a sort of month or so. It was something I did in 1990. I don't think they were even born. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, but really <laughs> pleasing, actually, because um, it's really cool. I, I suppose that happens in rock music as well, and you get young kids who are into I, Floyd. I find my daughter is really, uh, in fact, uh, my oldest daughter, she's. 27 now and she okay. uh, yeah because of course I had her when I was four you know because I'm young <laughs> as, but, she, but she uh, 18, yeah. yeah her and her grandfather are the biggest Grateful Dead fans you know oh, and yeah and, and, and you go. yeah they go bum around when the concert tour <laughs> comes around and in fact the last time they came in town they uh those two went together and uh in fact oh, it was the show cool. john mayer got sick and they ended up having to cancel the show and then oh, reschedule okay. it but but we were laughing me and me and her grandfather were laughing because you know obviously the grateful dead's been around as 
as long as Jerry Garcia. As, right? Yeah, sure. They, they were around so long, and all the older guys I had. Think, them. I mean, he, when I was a school, I feel like this sure. And 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 we, <laughs> my son, I, me and her grandfather were laughing because the older guys and the Grateful Dead had to be sitting around backstage when they had to cancel the show and like look at John Mayer, the kid, you know, and go. Are you kidding me? We've been hammering this for 50 years and you're the one that's sick. You can't go on. Oh, know? I see. He's like, he's like the sort of like Roddy Wood in the Stones. He's like the baby of the band. Yeah, yeah he's, he was Even the baby. Though, Roddy Wood's about 75. <laughs> <laughs> but you do uh, find the young, younger kids are getting into it. In fact, they... Yeah, they... And, I, and I suppose that's a good thing about, you know, all the online, all the platforms and, stream, and, and YouTube, that they're discovering... All this, all this music, and that, that's that just gave me a lot of heart. I just thought it was really cool. I mean, I, I've got nothing against to the older crowd. I'm one of them, but uh, it's just really nice. That, and these guys are fascinated by that late '80s, early '90s electronica. Berlin's always been a sort of very progressive, arty city. Really, right. a lot of cold. I mean, but, but I just found that really interesting um, and, and really good. And, and, and it's great, I suppose. That's why these musics live on, don't they? That's why, you know. I'm sure there's people with the Beatles who are 18, you know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, and, and with the Beatles' new album through AI, right? That's uh, is that? Yeah, that's a whole other, that's a whole another one, isn't it, Jules? That's a whole. It's funny. I do a few of these panels, you know, talking about music and film, blah blah blah. blah. But that subject comes up. I just did one actually. I hosted one actually in Glasgow just before Christmas called Resonate, which was good fun. But that was cool. That was a, it's a big subject. Every single conference I go to, everyone's well, yeah. What's the general yeah. consensus? Because I know, of course, I talk to a lot of authors on the show and uh, sure. as well. But and we know the consensus in our industry as, as writers. But I, what's the consensus yeah, going that, on at the conferences? Yeah, good good question. But uh, what's the question? The general thing is that we can't do nothing about it. So, you know, there's a bit of that, you know. <laughs> right, right. There's a bit of that, oh, Jesus, you know, the boat sailed. Uh, I, th- I think generally people still think they, they're they going to need the human. I mean, the big question is, you know, can someone do a Hans Zimmer score, you know, for $3,000 at some kid who's 19 in his bedroom? It sounds like Hans Zimmer. Uh, so that's the sort of worst scenario, isn't it? People just doing all this undercutting everybody. But everybody still thinks, I think the general thing is that they still need the human factor and they're still going to want to use Hans Zimmer or a much lesser scale, so someone like myself, you know, who's done a few films they might like, rather than it being done by AI. So I think everyone thinks at the moment where it was, we're all, although there are some people in the film game I know who are, are absolutely think it's I don't know there's a lot of doomers as well isn't there so well I and I think that's one of the things and you know I'm I'm obviously being a part of it I'm generally <laughs> supportive of the indie 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 industry but we uh you know I think that's like you said one of the worst fears is when you have the the capitalism aspect of the the huge firms uh yeah it, yeah it, it's it's a concern, right? And, and so... It is, because will it spiral out of control? I mean, well, you know, there's certain countries that are just pretty bonkers. I mean, <laughs> and, uh, I mean, you know, we're not perfect, but there's some that are just <laughs> off the grid, isn't there? Right, so right. In, in, in their hands, God knows what they're doing. So <laughs> I did think it was funny. I was thinking, I remember then when there was um, stickers on records that used to say there were no synthesizers used on this record. I think there'd be albums soon that say there was no AI used in the making. Of this <laughs> yeah, and, record, and they may have record. to. Yeah, it's a real interesting one. I was at this other conference in Brighton and everyone was checking out that there's Liam, the Oasis record, you know, they AI'd uh, his vocal, Liam Gallagher, and then they've got a band that sound like Oasis. And my, I was with my publishers, actually. They were checking out where all the publishers... And uh, yeah, and it didn't... See, that's the grey area, you know. Um, who claims the publishing rights? So there's an advert done in the AI and it sounds like, I don't know, it sounds like Stevie Wonder or Bob Dylan. Yeah, does, it, does the money go to the AI, AI company? I mean, it's, I'll tell you what, they need to, they're just so slow, as, you, as we all saw with the internet. With, I remember when Napster popped up, and I remember having these meetings with these guys. And right, going, right. This, this is never going to take off. <laughs> 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 they won't be streaming, you know. 
all these and, I, I, and all these guys, you know, sort of um, older than my dad, you know, and uh, and I was just thinking, guys, you ain't got a bloody clue. This is going to be massive. So. Yeah, I mean, we're, it's, un, it's uncharted waters, isn't it, mate? Really? I, I think that's what it is. We're all kind of, like you said, the ship has sailed and, and we're wondering if it's well, going to Titanic or, uh, <laughs> you know. But maybe, you know, part of me wants to hope and, and think that, you know, you mentioned Napster, you know, that, that was a yeah, sure. huge catalyst in the industry Master, to rethink mate. streaming and how artists get paid and, well, you know. Well, that's a whole nother thing. I mean, I... You know, that's one thing I do feel strongly about. I can't work out. I mean, I get less PRS, less royalties. Yeah, well, well we're like broken 20 up. 20 years ago, before I'd done all these films. It's just, right. So, so that is, and the, I'm let, let alone poor me, it doesn't matter so much. But I mean, how, how are these youngsters, how are people going to make a little, unless you know, you're Coldplay or Beyonce. You know, but um, all that middle ground seems to have gone. There's, there's all this underground industry and there's huge artists. There doesn't seem to be a lot in the middle. I suppose I was one of the guys, a lot, a lot of people in the middle in the 90s. And, and um, so you just fear, it's the same as acting, as uh, um, film as well. We've got that problem with working class kids, you know, um, getting into acting in, in, in England and London, you know, trying to find another Julie Walters, Michael Caine is getting harder by the day because they can't afford to do it. So you've got to think, that's a real worry. It, it, whether kids just, you know, it's just such a bad option these days, which would be terrible, you know, because um, you just have people who can afford to do it, like a plaything, a hobby, who are probably not the best artists. I mean, I've got nothing against people who come from a privileged yeah. world background, but... <laughs> You can't, you can't, the art should be for everybody, you know, you can't exclude. Well, well, hopefully, uh, you know, everybody in the creative industry sticks sticks together on this issue because, like you said, the boat has sailed, but, you know, I think yeah. it's incumbent. Hey, I, I have high hopes for the internet and, and things like this streaming Oh, me show. too. Me, me too, and I think it will redress. No, totally. And There's loads of things I love about the internet. I mean, what it's built for, I love it for information. I use it all the time to find out bits of bobs, and I love all that, and that's what it was for, really, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, I, sure. Um, but there's obviously quite a few. <laughs> it, it wasn't for feet picks, in case anybody in the audience was wondering. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. no, exactly. And, and, and oh, I, I have got certain friends, you know, they probably smoke a bit too much of the stuff. But you know, who just always, you know, they always go about it, especially when we had the lockdown of cut all this conspiracy stuff. That's right. The wormhole. <laughs> and I just, I just, oh my word. I mean, you, you, I think you've got to remember to engage with real people. In life. Yes, <laughs> and I think that's that's the key. And, and you know, speaking of yeah. which, I tell you, we, you know, having engaged with you on X and just seeing the volume of work because you work really hard, Lowell. I mean, obviously, oh, it's, it's oh, well, we well, all well, do well, as well, indie well, creators. Yeah, I'm not right? going down a coal mine, or my brother's wife's a nurse. You know, that, that's a proper job, isn't it? Right, yeah. right. But hey, I tell you, as an indie creator, you, you definitely. What do you do to unwind and and? <laughs> Oh yeah, no, I, I, lo I love doing that. Oh, I love football. I, lo I love watching sport. Uh, my uh, oldest son, the eighteen-year-old, uh, was professional footballer actually. But but we, but we love we love football. So football, uh, and I listen to chilled music. <laughs> Soundtrack. <laughs> I <lo> I lo <laughs> And, so, and I'll, I'll have to do music, football, and films, George. Uh, and, of course, and, I, and I'll have to do some English translation for the American audience. He was he was discussing soccer, ladies and gentlemen. He was. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. Um, so yeah, I was discussing. I love soccer, and um, I love I love my films, George. I like a lot of American noir. Actually, I like all those fifties. You know, those old, old sort of crime. I love Humphrey Bogart and I love uh, oh, right. I love that yeah I love I mean well, there's a few good British noirs but I think the Americans are the best are you British do you do any films. work here in the, in the States do you uh... yeah I've worked on a, well obviously I did Ray Liotta's last film Dangerous Waters and the director one of the producers director John Barr and his wife one of the producers Sousa they're from um, they're from Santa Monica LA so I work with them I've done a few LA films not many actually mm. it's mainly um, British a couple of Danish actually <laughs> randomly I worked with that Nicholas Wine and Refin really good uh, director who, who directed Drive um, so a couple of Danish few LA's um, 
uh, but mainly British, and I love British film. I'm not just saying that. I really love British film. I, I sort of grew up, you know, with sort of a Long Good Friday, uh, Get Carter. I love TV oh, sure. Show. I, I, I love all that and the performance. Uh, yeah, I've, I've always... And I, I'll tell you what, I, lo- I love seeing London. and have a, I love seeing London on film. I just find that really interesting I mean uh, but I haven't said that one of my favourite periods George, is all those 70s sort of New York films uh, or that's called Taxi Driver and right, I love the right. Dirty Harry films um, and, and uh, Al Pacino I, I, I love that whole sort of 72 to late 70s New York I, I, people explained to me why those films were so good they were looking to the French New Wave so they're I mean, Taxi Driver's like an art house film, if you think about it, really. But they were working to these great budgets. They had loads of money. Right. So they they were making these brilliant sort of high-end art house films. You know, All the President's Men. I love that whole... I love that era. When I talk to a lot of directors, I think that is a lot of people's... And the same... Uh, with, with music and art as well, I, I love that whole that music that come out of the set. You know, that the CBGBs, the whole scene with Ramones, Patti Smith, Blondie, Talking Heads, right? And then you had G. Michelle Basquiat, my favorite artist um, from New York. That whole period, and uh, and all the graffiti, the hip hop, Grandmaster Flash. And it, it's funny because New York was was totally broke, wasn't it? At the t- time there was rubbish in the streets. Um, you know, it was lawless. You know, the, the city gone bust, didn't it? Yeah, yeah they the did have time, issues. You, yeah, <laughs> and, and the, but you had all the best art. That's what I always say to my buddies when things are really crap. <laughs> well, it's like we say down here in the South. You know, you can't sing the blues unless you've had the blues down here. But <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, that, that's right, mate. That, that that is so right. As um. Yeah, I don't know if great art... That's an interesting subject, actually. Does great art come out of that whole comfortable, comfort, comfort zone? How, and big, but I don't think it does, really. I think you need a bit of... I think you're totally right, you know? Yeah. That, that, it, that, I, I think you need a bit of edge, don't you? Sort of. I, I, don't, I don't like things too nice. I've never I've never liked living in areas that are too nice. Really. I like, and I'm not saying I want to... <laughs> a crack house, but, uh, but, but I, I, I do like... <laughs> I do, I do like it. real people, real people. I mean, uh, you know, I, sort of. I think that's what it is. And, and, and the industry so, I think, fascinating to a lot of people, Lowell, obviously. And and here sure. in, in Hollywood South is, you know, it's known here. We, we do so much film work in New Orleans. Uh, and it's Brilliant. actually wonderful, like you said, uh, you know, to see your city highlighted in films and we, oh. Right by my house, they filmed Deepwater Horizon with all oh, okay. the CGI, and it was Brilliant. just fantastic. You know, uh, th- yeah. that whole oil, oil rig in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico was sitting in the parking lot of, of Lowe's <laughs> here. And uh, <laughs> not to give any way, away any secrets, but it was a wonderful, great movie, great work by the CGI artists. <laughs> oh, that. Yeah, that's a whole other art form. I've got a few friends that work in effects and yeah, amazing. I mean, the budgets, Jesus, there's a guy, a friend of mine, he works in Soho, but does a big American mall. And he, he's, he, yeah. he gets a bigger budget for the effects than I get, <laughs> a bigger budget than the whole film done. Like, <laughs> like five million for like effects, you know, a lot of films well, are- That's uh, it. Well, one and a half sterling, one and a half million sterling, a lot of films are work on that sort of film, a million. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you, and and that's one of, like I had said earlier, one of them. I I love the thought of having you on the show to to get to ask you and maybe let the audience know. Can you give us kind of that that seedy underbelly of the industry from the the composer uh, and music supervisor area? Because that's a kind of specialist field. and, And, you know, it makes so much of a movie. That the the soundtrack behind it that most people subconsciously don't, you know, pay attention to, but without it, the film's bollocks, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't think a great soundtrack can save a film, uh, but but you, you're totally right. It could turn a good film into a great film, and a white film into a really good. And, and some films are just totally music driven, aren't you? Which ones I like, you know. So I work on two levels, actually. As I said, I started on the music supervision, which is basically picking the tracks to go into certain scenes and then clearing them with the master recording with a record company or, or the artist might own their own master recordings. 
And then the publishing rights, sync rights with the publishing cut, the people who wrote the song. So I do all that as well. And then, uh, then, then, then after a few years, I started, I was always putting tracks on my own, well, you can't blame me. Uh, <laughs> the back. So, but it, it'd be like usually like one track of mine, and then it ended end up two, three, and in the end, I just thought, blimey, I might as well start. So, so, so I started scoring them as well, but I don't do it all, on all the films, but um, but yeah, so that I suppose there's um, there's the score, uh, and, and there's, there's the source, the sync tracks, the, the actual tunes, you know, so it works on two levels uh, and background music as well, like coming out of a car radio or in a petrol station. So we use music for that. I try not, probably people, library companies won't want to hear that. I don't really like using too much library music. I always try and um, give some young artists a chance or whatever, or if it's a bit of background music. But a lot of films, so... Yeah, and, and the average, probably the amount of like a film, let's say like The Business or Football pa- Factory, invariably there's, there's about 15, 18 tracks, you know, in a film I use. And then, you, then, then you'll have like 20, 30 minutes of score. Um, there's sound effects as well, which I don't get really involved in. That, that's a whole other skill. You'll have someone doing that. Right. You know, all, all the bangs and whistles, you know, guns going off and people getting slapped or whatever, falling down. So, yeah, everything basically, you know, sort of walking through a load of, uh, you know, someone munching some crisps. To, to <laughs> <see that. laughs> someone walking up a gravel drive at midnight. Uh, so that's a whole other world. So that's not me. Um, but they're, 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 they're a wacky bunch as well. <laughs> and, and that's an interesting question for someone who doesn't know when you talk about... Uh, you know the sound effects. How much, how much of that is post film generated versus recorded while yeah, they're shooting? Yeah, I, I think a lot. And they do something called ADR, so they actually drop in. Because sometimes, you know, I don't know. They might, they might be seeing me and you chatting at a bar in a, in a, a big scene. You know, we're in a pub, and, and you can't hear me very well because the slot machine keeps going off. So they have to dub it over afterwards. There's often a lot of ADR. And they say, like with the football factory film I did, there was a lot of crowd scenes, and so I, so I'd get loads of my mates in all shouting around a microphone. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's really fun. It, it, that is a funny, quite a lot, it, but it's different every film, George. I've just done a really cool film actually called Invincible coming out in the spring. Brilliant uh, new female director Emma Croft, giving her a plug. Emma Croft. Um, work. I'm trying to work with more female directors as well. Work with. I've done. 40 films I worked at, or maybe a couple more. And I worked, I, I'd only done two films with women and both of them have been a man and a woman. So I, I thought, this, this is ridiculous. I mean, no offence to coal, but you know, if it was coal mining, you could understand why there was more men perhaps. You, you know what I'm saying? Right, um, right. I'm sure there are some, lots of women coal miners, but you know what I mean? But there's no reason why it shouldn't be 50-50 film directors, is there? I mean, it's just ridiculous. Wow, so uh, you've done 40 films, worked on 40 films, eh? I think I think I think so uh, to count up. Uh, but anyway, so so I sort of tried to sort of um, trying to work with them. There's so many great female directors. It just seems really harder for them to get films made. And I don't know. So there's a bit of an old boys' club, unfortunately. I suppose that in, exists invariably in a lot of industries. Um, but anyway, she's a great director, and I'm working uh, with a really cool new female director as well. Uh, called Claire Elliott as well, who's a writer as well. I mean, it, there's some real, real talent and and also also diversity as well. I just, yeah, it's open it up. Film should be, all art should be for everyone. I just, but there is definitely an old club. I don't know if there's so much in, I don't know the LA scene so well, but, you know. Right, right. So, yeah, let's, let's make it 50-50. In fact, there should be a bloody rule book. <laughs> <Probably. laughs> I mean, uh, you know, uh, and, and yeah, because you're right. Uh, I mean, as a there is so many talented people out there that you know sure, it, sure. It, it's obviously something that needs to be proliferated. Other than like you said, that club mentality, and and you get that in so many industries, not just totally. the creator industries. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, totally. Uh, I don't want to run down one sector of society, but. There's a type in there who just seems to be sort of running quite a lot, and uh, we just need to open it up, you know, <laughs> and, and not just because obviously you're going to find some of the best stories, some of the best work there. I mean, some of the best stuff comes from 
you know, from uh, stories at the end of the day, and it, it doesn't matter, you know. And I, and I think that's the intrigue for me of the indie indie industry is that. You know, there's so much great work that has heart and soul, and and you have that, totally. that gatekeeper aspect sometimes of the larger legacy studios and publishers, and so yeah, no, no you're right, you're you're right, fella, and and, and um, yeah, I mean, you can't let it grind you down. I mean, it's definitely got problems in that area. I don't think the music business is perfect at all, but I think it's it's see, I think it's a little bit more adjusted actually. The, when I got into film, I was quite, oh, Jesus, it's some of the attitudes, and it's right from the 1950s. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so we've got to break that down, and uh, and then and I think we're, we're, we'll get some great work on the back of that, you know. So, I mean, it's just my little effort, you know, but, yeah. but, but, uh, but yeah, it, sh- it, sh- it should be for all, shouldn't it? Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I think that's a good stance to have, Lowell. You're, you're in it, and, uh, you know, so yeah, what are you working on now at the uh, moment? Yeah, I'm working on a film called Lone... Here you go, this is a bit different. Uh, I'm not a gay guy, I couldn't care less if I was. I'm working on an LGBT film <laughs> called Lone Star Ball, which is based on a book, uh, Boon tracks for that was my friend, really lovely friend, Vicky Williams, who's, who's a brilliant music supervisor. She's a music supervisor. I'm doing tracks for it, not scoring it. Got a few tracks in there. Um, yeah, there's loads of things. And, and uh, could be doing a film about a band called the KLF. Do you know those guys? The guys that went off and burnt a million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Which I know, especially one of them. One of them's a, a friend, actually, Jimmy Coulty. There's two friends, two guys, Jimmy Coulty and Bill Drum. They've been this notorious band of pranksters in the early 90s. Uh, they had a, about four number ones. One with Tammy Monette singing, actually. <laughs> they were crazy guys. They had Tammy Monette singing about an ice cream band, which was uh, quite quite interesting. Uh, so, so this film, I guess you're working on, is is it's probably going to be rated like LGBT PG thirteen. I don't know. Actually, uh, <laughs> I just added some more alphabets and numbers. I was yeah, <laughs> I haven't got a clue actually, George. That's a good question. Uh, and it's all guys from that Rue Drag Paul, you know that show. A lot of the actors from that are in it. I, I've seen clips. So I haven't got it anyway. So I've done the main track for that. It's really different for me. It's really country. It's actually called "I Got It Bad." Sang for a lovely singer I work with a lot called Eva Abraham. But yeah, no, I mean I've, I've just done the Accident Man films. I don't know if you know the guy. Uh, uh, Scott, he's amazing, um, amazing martial artist. Uh, incredible, goes all over the world fighting. Uh, Scott Atkins, and he bought the rights to the Accident Man. It's about a, oh, you'd love these films. You should check them out. Uh, I will. Man one, Accident Man two. <laughs> it's about a, a bunch of assassins. They make people have accidents. <laughs> <laughs> nice, it's nice. Like, oh, it's, they're great films, man. They're oh. really funny and really entertaining. There's two of them. So he bought the rights. It's a comic book series, and I've done them both. So, two just come out at Christmas. I think it's called uh, Accident Man 2, A Hitman's Holiday. It's all shot in Malta. That was such fun. Uh, oh, Scott's wow. brilliant. He, he's a big actor as well. He's in John Wick 4. He's an amazing, credi- credible fighter. He's amazing. Uh, oh, he's, that's you know, that's he's amazing, like, like, definitely. It's like Bruce Lee when he fights. You know, It's, it's like a sort of work of art. You know, Whew. The scenes are incredible. So... Uh, but it's quite tongue in cheek, funny as well. It's not sort of out, it's, it's, it's really cool. And he uh, sends himself up. He's a very cool character. So I love working on them. He's doing a third one. You should definitely check them out Accident Man 1, Accident Man 2. Um, nice. So they're nice. good. As I said, I did Ray Liotta's last film that came out just before Christmas Dangerous Waters. That's worth checking out. Working on the Lone Star Ball film. Yeah, and probably doing a film about these. Um, KLF pranksters were just. just uh, is there anything? There's probably something else, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you, your link tree is is just a, uh, you know, amazing and highlights a lot of the great work you were just talking about, and, and oh, I highly. You, yeah, it, it's just. I've probably never done half of it. I, uh, <laughs> my, my friend, she does that for me. <laughs> oh, really? Well, I tell you what, you just. Uh, and I know you send some great, great links uh, on X. Uh, you know to to some of the work you're into so i i just highly recommend everybody uh 
Please, if you haven't already, go follow Lowell on X. Uh, he's at Lowell underscore Vertigo. It's right there on the I'll screen bring, for you underneath I'll bring the. To that, bro. I'll bring yeah, to that. I, uh, yeah, I definitely yeah. cheers, definitely. But uh, I tell you, because Lowell just great to interact with. Uh, obviously, you could tell from this interview, he, he's just a fun guy to, to chat with well, you, and get inside. Thanks, George. I just don't like all that mystification. You know, I mean, I work hard, as you know, but I have a laugh as well. Jesus Christ. Like I said, you know, I was about to say my brother's wife's a nurse. You know, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 a, that's a proper job, isn't it? Bedpans, blood and muck and all, sure. you know, all through COVID and lockdown. And me just diddling about making a few tunes. So, But, but, it, it's, but it's cool, though, isn't it, as well? Because it's entertainment and people need entertainment as well, you know. So, oh, yeah. sure. Well, Lowell, I, I, I tell you, and, and, and I, I had to ask you at the beginning of the, uh, right before we got on for the show, I, sure. I was laughing. I, I said, how do you pronounce your name? It, it is Lowell, right? Not laugh I have out frozen, loud. I've fro- I frozen, George. Can you can you still see me? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you look good on this oh, end. Oh, don't worry. That's the main thing. Carry on, Bob. Yeah, but uh, no, I was, I was just asking about your name. Is Do you feel kind of usurped? On your name, Lowell? I do. I, I feel like I've been hijacked, George. <laughs> uh, but I've got a funny story because my mate's pet Alsatian died and he said, he texted me and he said, it, I think he's, 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 he's so sad about Fred. Uh, uh, um, he, he said about his Alsatian died. And I, and I, sorry, I texted back to him and said, I'm really sad to hear that. Low, my name. And, and, he, and he texted back and said, what's the effing funny about that? <laughs> and I didn't know what he was talking about. And he was really upset. He wouldn't talk to me about three days. And someone yeah. explained it, 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 it laugh out loud. And, become, and he thought, I'd say, you know, I, I thought it was very funny that his beloved pet Alsatian had uh, shrugged off its mortal coil. But uh, That's right. None of your letters now end seriously, apparently, right? <laughs> that's right. But, you know, hopefully it's an icebreaker and they won't take it too seriously, George. Ah, uh, that's it. Well, Lowell, look, I can't thank you enough for agreeing to come My on the show man. as a guest. My- my pleasure. And, and and thank you for having a cocktail with me. And I hope everybody in the audience poured one and enjoyed this conversation with Lowell, a great composer, music supervisor for film and TV. And please, like I mentioned earlier, if you haven't followed him already on X, go give him a follow at Lowell Thanks, underscore Vertigo. You'll and still be on that retainer, George. I promise you, my dad hasn't dropped off. That's right. And I don't know if you can see it. Oh, I got a backwards film problem all the time. But I don't know if you can see it, Lowell. But up above us, the whole show, ladies and gentlemen, the QR code will take you straight to you. Lowell's link tree. And thank you can you, check George. out all his great work and any upcoming work he may have. And, and I highly encourage you to go. You have a newsletter or anything that people subscribe I, to? I, I haven't, George. Can, can I just say a quick shout out to some of my buddies I work uh, with? Please, Absolutely. Really quick. So, great singer, songwriter Eva, uh, Stephen Gordon, uh, Duncan Forbes, uh, great director Claire Elliott, as I said before, great director Emma Croft, uh, Suki Smith, just all these fantastic characters. Because uh, I've got a real crew. Lewis Van Johnson, they're all absolutely wonderful, talented, brilliant people. So, I just want to give them. And my two boys as well, Arthur and Rufus. That's uh, it, sorry. Oh, well, amazing. <laughs> well, Lowell, uh, yeah, you, and please promise you'll uh, come back on the show if you got anything big coming on. I'd love to have you back. That'd be brilliant. And you you have a brilliant rest of the day. You enjoy it. Have a great day, George. I, I'm, I'm well on my way, friend. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, brother.